you have you have like $60, $70 worth of room to the upside. You don't need to rush. Let these things play out. And for all you guys who've been patient and really, really just picking your spots, especially for your option players, it's very, very important to do so because again, when these things do confirm, the high probability case that you will get paid uh, on your patience is gonna work out uh, incredibly well. So let's talk about Welcome to Access a Trader the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well so we knew going into uh today's session if you go back to last night's video um you saw a very very pretty clear pl pretty clear point that i was trying to make we were stuck in these two ranges last night uh we got rejected off this 324 level right but we reclaimed the 50-day moving average and what i anticipated for today's session was going to be a lot of slow methodical churn right um a lot of indecision movements to the upside, moved, moving to the downside. And that's what we got. Um, I, I would say today, I would say 90% of the day, 85% of the day, there was absolutely nothing going on. Uh, matter of fact, when we gapped down today, and you got to give the bulls a lot of credit today, and I'll explain in a second. We knew the levels that the bulls needed to hold, right? We closed on the 50-day moving average, but we also knew we got rejected at the top of the channel yesterday. This morning, when we got a gap down today, the bulls could have easily gave up, okay? And it's a very, very important point, uh, kind, of a, kind of a point of, of where we might see the market going next, right? So the bulls could have easily laid down and died this morning, okay? We could have been having this conversation somewhere around the 10-day moving average, and going into tomorrow, I would have been turning around and say, well, if we confirm the 10-day moving average, we're going to test uh, the bottom channel, right? Not so fast. That's exactly why we play the game. And even though there was nothing going on today towards the end of the day and the Fed kind of did their job, right? They did their job. Uh, they turned around and said, number one, there won't be any raise um, interest rate hikes until at least uh, 2022. That was exactly what the market wanted to hear. Um, it was very, very important to understand that they also turned around and said, look, we're going to do whatever we need to do uh, as the Fed to kind of make sure, they didn't use the word, make sure people got back on their feet, but that's exactly what they were talking about, almost like a, almost like a backstop. And the one thing that the market did today that really accomplished, and even though it was a pretty quiet day for me, um, I caught some Amazon to the long side, uh, I shorted some FLGT, I lost a little bit of money there. But I was very I was very quiet today. I, I just wanted to make sure that I was reading the market uh, the right way. And, and sometimes you need to kind of take a step back to kind of look at the big picture, to kind of give you a really good opinion of what's gonna happen next. And even though, and you turn around and you look at the ranges today, even though, again, we came up to this upper channel here and we got rejected today, right, on the Fed on the Fed statement, the one thing, well, the two things that I liked very, very well, and I think this will give us a clue what's going to happen next, number one, we did hold the rising five-day moving average. And again, if you believe in the theory that the five-day moving average is the shortest sentiment, which I do, you can see how it held here, you can see how it held here, and even though we gapped lower today, the market held, right, the market held incredibly well. Uh, reclaim the five-day moving average, and not only did it claim, reclaim the five-day moving average on a close, it reclaimed the 50-day moving average, actually improving on yesterday's close. So that's super duper bullish. Now the key, the next step is to wait, right? It's to wait, guys. It's we don't know if they're going to take out the top of the channel tomorrow. They don't. We don't know if they're going to take out the top of the channel on Friday or next week, or maybe not at all. And this is where we really talk about, we, and we say this all the time, how we allow the market to tell us what's gonna happen next. There's no room, right guys? There's no room for interpretation anymore, folks. You see this 124 level, we keep on getting rejected over and over and over again. The fact that we reclaim pretty good levels today, the, the five day and the 50 day, all we need to do as the bulls, right? Bulls unite, diamond hands, Cuban zirconia hands, poodle hands, whatever hands you wanna go, no hands, right? 
What all we need to do is reclaim this one 324 level on the Qs and we have a really aggressive potential move on the stocks. So all those setups that we were looking at a couple of days ago, actually yesterday at 12 o'clock, they looked so great for today until the market sold off. Well, they're kind of back in play for the next day or so, right? Where NVIDIA came so close a couple of days ago to taking out this channel. Well, again, now it's still very, very close to taking out this channel. Netflix, although again, maybe it's a day or two away, you can see how close it is to reclaiming this channel again. If you look at Facebook, right? F Facebook has actually been the leader of this whole kind of resurgence uh, of beta names and it continues to move higher. All it needs to do is just really get above this channel here, macro, and it's gonna explode as well. Even Amazon, of all things, wrote, right? They, we were watching today, they were buying some pretty aggressive uh, 3,200, I think 3,250 weeklies um, as well. Look how close it is to the 50-day moving average, right? Any close on Amazon above like 3,190, 3,200, it's gonna start its next leg up. The key to what we're talking about right now is to wait for these things to actually do so, right? Uh, the, the, the solace that I'm getting, the warm feeling that I'm getting in, in, in my belly, the fact that we didn't sell off today, the fact that we did reclaim major levels, you, you have to assume now, right? And again, we have to wait, and we can only assume, but we have to wait. Once these things really reclaim, we could have a, an, an aggressive uh, bull market rally in, in technology land, and beta land. Until that happens, though, we do have to wait for that green light and don't anticipate any other trade. Uh, I would love to see it happen tomorrow. I would love to see those cues uh, reclaim the 50-day moving average. We haven't had, we haven't had such a, we haven't had a sustained rally in technology, especially the beta names, the Amazons, um, you know, the Amazons, the Teslas of the world, the Netflix and the videos of the world in such a long time that it's really, really needed. It's a feel good, you know, it's a feel good situation. Fund managers love buying these stocks, prop traders, hedge funds. It's a feel good environment when these things go. And the only thing we can do is again, think, cross our fingers, get your rosary beads out, whoever you pray to this, this, this evening, let's just hope for the market to reclaim these macro levels and we start to move higher. Until that happens, folks, again, it's a patient waiting game. The market is not on your time, remember that. It's, it's never on your time. It's all about you kind of waiting it out and seeing who, you know, who kind of plays the game of chicken first. But again, this is the line in the sand, folks, that 324, uh, on the close, you can see yesterday's high was 324. You can see today's high, uh, 323.85. So there's no more mystery, okay? You, you don't have to be a world-class uh, chartist to kind of figure this out. This is it, right? This is the line in the sand. We reclaim it. I think everything's gonna light up. And when you start looking at a lot of flags for the next couple of days, look at Tesla, right? It's flagging. Tesla could have gotten murdered today, right? Uh, Tesla today opened below not only did it open up below yesterday's low, remember we were talking about Tesla for possible short today? Not only did we did this thing open up below yesterday's low, not only did it open up below the, the previous week's low, it opened below the five-day moving average and reclaimed. So you could see the flag, how good this flag is starting to form here on Tesla as well. So we have Netflix, we have Nvidia, we have Tesla, right? We have all these names that are ready to go now the point of reference is let's wait for them to do so. Again, do not anticipate a move. If you anticipate a move on Tesla, I promise you, you will get absolutely manhandled, okay? It's just, it's just reality. These levels are there for a reason. If the level is X, okay, you don't wait for B, or you don't wait for C to enter the trade. You wait for X to get confirmed, and when it does, usually good things are gonna happen. And, and again, the greatest thing about a stock like Tesla and Nvidia and Netflix, you don't need that perfect entry. So for example, if Tesla starts reclaiming this whole channel here, you have 40, 50 points of upside to the next supply. Does it make a difference if you enter the channel here or you enter here or here or here, right? If you have 60 points of upside, usually you're probably going to get a pretty aggressive move. Uh, same thing with NVIDIA as well, right? Look at the 50-day moving average. You have, you have like $60, $70 worth of room to the upside. You don't need to rush. Let these things play out. And for all you guys who've been patient and really, really just picking your spots, especially if you're option players, it's very, very important to do so because again, when these things do confirm the high probability case that you will get paid 
uh, on your patients is going to work out uh, incredibly well. So let's talk about today's pivots. Again, very light. Okay, it was a very light day, but we anticipated a light day. It wasn't a shock for me uh, that the market was going to do absolutely nothing until after the Fed. Literally, the market started moving up. Literally, just kind of came into play like 10 minutes after the Fed announcement. So it wasn't like one of those all day rallies the market did, you know, was going crazy. It was literally very, very methodical and finally the market moved up. So let's talk about some pivots today. Uh, BYND uh, pre-market held 137 uh, three times. If it builds below, can flush. Here was BYND. Again, I was very, very light today. Uh, so for all you guys who did take it, I didn't take any BYND. Uh, here's the 137, right? 137, 137, 137. Went to like 135 and change. Um, Tesla, again, never got to the, obviously never got to the 650 area uh, that I was watching. Alibaba never got to the 225 level I was watching. Uh, Baidu, it, it came in a little bit, not a lot. I actually like Baidu for tomorrow. But Baidu took out this level. Yeah, it went down like a dollar or so. Uh, not a big move. But look at Baidu. All of a sudden reclaimed every major level as well. Looks actually pretty good for tomorrow uh, as well. Uh, FJ, I lost a little bit of money on. It went down like like 40 cents or so and then squeezed me back up. It was so thin. Uh, Facebook continues to be incredibly good, right? Like really, really strong money flow there. Uh, we keep on seeing repeat 300, 305 calls coming in. Uh, 279.30 has been rejected twice. If the tape starts to rally, and that was a big, big point of, of what we saw today and starts to reclaim, it could be good. So here is the pivot on Facebook. Congratulations for all you guys who caught it. Uh, here is the pivot right over here. It kept on getting rejected. If you look at these two levels here, it kept on getting rejected here at 279.30. And then it really took off. Went to like 282 on the first candle and obviously later in the day uh, really went nuts. But a $3 move, initial move was pretty good uh, as well on Facebook. Obviously take on the way up. Uh, VLDR never triggered, but I actually like this thing. Keep an eye on this VLDR, guys. Um, you know, they were coming for, th for 12 and a half puts. They were also coming for... Uh, the jet, the April 10 puts. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building below 13. Um, I think and get hit. Uh, ZKN for all you guys who caught it, this uh, this NFT uh, phenomenon is kind of this new in thing to do. Uh, builds above 19, you can go. Yeah, nice quick little scalp. ZKN here was ZKN took out that 910 uh, and it went to uh, 938. So nice little move there. But I, I, again, I think the key. And this is what we always talk about. Sometimes you just got to take a step back and analyze and gather data. I, I think the big picture of what we did see today, I like a lot. Okay, I like the fact that we reclaimed uh, major rising support. I like the fact that we did this in a very, very timely manner. I like the fad, that fact that the Fed turned around and said, hey, look, you don't have to speculate about interest rates. We're going to do whatever it takes uh, to kind of let everybody help uh, them, everybody get on their feet. So we will not be raising rates at least for the next year. Uh, also, the IRS to kind of give everybody a little bit of uh, breathing room uh, has decided to push back the tax filing date uh, to, I believe, May the 15th. So everybody else, uh, so everybody has an extra month to kind of prepare. But the most important part is we anticipated a day like this. We did the research the last night. We got the hand that we, we thought we were going to get played last night. And the most important part is I didn't, and I, I think most people will, will, will uh, kind of uh, speak on their own action. We didn't fall for the 2 7 also, right? I know some of you guys played some things, caught some things, blah, blah, blah. But the point is on the macro view, we let the market play out. We got the data, we digested the data, and now we feel really good about what potentially could happen uh, back to the upside. Will it happen to the upside? Nobody knows. We can only speculate, but at least we have the data to kind of back it up. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.